Nutrients are essential compounds in the body. We need them for literally every biochemical reaction that our body is going to do to help support our function. And that includes brain, hormones, cardiovascular health, and energy, generally speaking. When we blood test nutrients, we are looking at the level that is present. And so here you can kind of get a sense is, is there at least a sufficient amount and or is there an optimal amount and how do those nutrients potentially relate to each other when that's relevant? Omega-3 and omega-6s are part of the essential fat category that we have. Omega-3s are specifically anti-inflammatory and they are kind of harder to seek out in our diet because we have to be strategic about consuming them. You're gonna find them in your cold water fish and in products like walnuts or flax seeds as well. And they provide this soothing anti-inflammatory effect on the body and have potential positive outcomes with respect to cardiovascular disease, brain health. Omega-6s are more ubiquitous. They are gonna be found in some of our oils like canola oil and many packaged foods, generally speaking. In our diets, we tend to have lots of omega-6 influence and generally speaking, they are more pro-inflammatory. So it is really important to think about the balance of the two. Ideally, you have more omega-3s than omega-6s in your diet to have a healthy lifestyle, a healthy life, and longevity as well. Omega-6s are not inherently bad. In fact, we want them present. We just want the presence of omega-3s to ideally be higher than the presence of omega-6s. In the US, Americans tend to have almost a 20 to one omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, and really we would like more like a one-to-one -one ratio, or even better if omega-3s were slightly higher than omega-6s. So you can get blood markers that will break down your omega-3 byproducts. Specifically, you might want to look at DHA and EPA that both have this positive anti-inflammatory role in the body. So you may look for, again, the balance. You wanna see higher levels of omega-3s, the DHA and EPA, and lower levels of things like arachidonic acid, which is more of an omega-6. So iron and ferritin both refer to kind of how is our iron status in the body. Ferritin is a storage form of iron, so it's the backup reserve of iron we have stored in our liver and is important when we're thinking about diseases related to excess or iron overload that can be a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. Iron generally is involved in the oxygen carrying capacity of your red blood cells, so it's important for energy and protection against anemia. Anemia is a condition where there is not enough capacity of the red blood cell to carry oxygen to the tissues. So iron and ferritin levels are gonna be supported by animal products that are rich in iron. And or if you're not someone who's eating animal products, you can think about supplementing or increasing your consumption of vitamin C, which is enhancing the absorption of your iron that you consume. So oftentimes in women, you'll see iron levels that might look sufficient and ferritin levels that look low. And this is because given women menstruate, we lose iron regularly and that storage or backup form of iron might be overall lower, but we're supporting the most important thing, which is iron in the red blood cell, and we keep that relatively steady. In a situation where someone has normal iron levels, but low ferritin levels, I may still encourage nutritional forms of iron, but I also consider supplementing. Vitamin D is a hormone that actually has an impact on lots of systems on the body. It's gonna regulate bone health and metabolism. It's gonna be protective for your brain, generally speaking, and plays a role in the immune system. Low vitamin D might be connected to bone disorders, so osteopenia, osteoporosis. You may be more at risk for mood disorders and depression and or have immune issues making you vulnerable towards infections generally. Vitamin D can be affected by being in the sun. So if you are someone who is lucky enough to have that influence through the sun, you can create more exposure or give yourself more exposure to the sun. Some people are resistant to that mechanism and therefore supplementing with vitamin D capsules and or thinking about fortified foods with vitamin D can be helpful. So you can find some vitamin D in milk products as well as animal products. So animal protein in general tends to have some vitamin D in it. 
Vitamin B12 plays a role in your red blood cells in methylation, DNA methylation, as well as plays a role in energy and brain function. So the B12 leading on a laboratory is quite large in range. Um, therefore, if you are truly deficient, you may have trouble with nerve function, you may have neuropathies, you may have depression, you may have low energy, but sometimes even when you're mid-range, you may struggle with mood disorders or lowered energy. B12 is primarily going to be found in animal products. So consuming those certainly will help. And if you are not somebody who consumes those, then supplementing with B12 is a very easy backup solution. Homocysteine is a marker that is involved in B vitamin metabolism. So it plays a role with B12 and folate and actually is independently a risk factor for cardiovascular disease when elevated. So we look at it both as an assessment of kind of B12 and folate status, but also independently as a marker for cardiovascular health. So part of that is like people have different ways like they can have genetic SNPs in what's called methylation, which is like that whole B and homocysteine like metabolism. And people that have genetic SNPs are more likely to not move their homocysteine out of the body. It elevates and that's this kind of like independent risk factor for heart disease. Zinc, first of all, is important for skin and hair, for hormone health and for your immune health. We mostly worry about zinc when it is low. Here we think about you may have trouble with hair loss, with skin disorders, you may have trouble with your testosterone production and or a lowered immune system. The most important thing I would say to think about if your zinc is low is to think about getting it from your diet. My favorite source of zinc would be oysters. So the most common nutrient issues I see in my patients would be number one, lowered B12. And this is because the reference range on B12 is so large. And so many people go to their primary care doctor, they get this number tested, it looks normal, and they're sent along their way. But unfortunately, B12 is really optimal when it's sitting around 600 or higher. So helping people identify that and getting the right support when it's kind of suboptimal but not deficient, I think is really important. Number two, I see vitamin deficiency with D all the time. So D vitamin deficiency would be the number two thing I see very commonly and can be life-changing for people when supplemented or improved. So I see significant fatigue, brain fog, and hormone dysfunction as the most common things that people complain about and struggle with that can be positively influenced by addressing vitamin D deficiency. To be fair, the omega check level or the balance between omega threes and sixes is routinely off unless I'm working with someone who is exclusively a pescatarian. And people get confused about this or even frustrated about this because many people will say, well, I eat fish three times a week. How is it possible that I don't have optimal omega three levels? And the bottom line is omega sixes are so ubiquitous that in order to create that proper balance, you really need to have a lot of omega threes present. Cutting down omega-6 levels would happen by decreasing your consumption of processed food, being mindful about oils like corn and canola, if you can, and then definitely just pushing the omega-3. So getting in your fatty fish, thinking about flax and walnut, and if you have to, supplementing. When we blood test, we're actually focusing on micronutrients. Micronutrients are, you know, the small compounds, your, your omega-3s, your vitamins, your minerals that affect health, which is distinct and different from your macronutrients, which include protein, fat, carbs, and fiber.